And we're back with more of the Shaq News Awards 2023. It just keeps going. It's just never-ending stream of awards and celebration <laughs> of video games. Uh, we're going to do the award for best cameo of the year 2023 in a video game. And I'm going to go through these uh, nominees real quick, and then we can hit them. Uh, the first one is Jean-Claude Van Damme in Mortal Kombat 1. Next up is Dimitri Vegas in Hitman 3. Probably one of the more baffling ones, Nicolas Cage in Dead by Daylight. One of the least surprising ones, but still cool, Sam Lake in Alan Wake 2. And then Tamara Morrison voicing Boba Fett in a Star Wars game. Star Wars Jedi Sur no, Star Wars Jedi pause. Survivor, right? Is that Star Wars Jedi colon Survivor. Colon. Got it. St Star Wars Jedi colon Survivor. Tamara Morrison, voice of Boba Fett. So those are the five uh, nominees for this category. Rob Schneider wasn't in a Madden game this year, so we were unable to nominate Rob Schneider for his role as a GM of a fictional football team. Or a carrot. Uh, but yeah. So... Where the hell do we start? I don't know. Can I, can I kick and... things off? Yeah, sure, David. Go for it. Okay. I'm going to tell you all the story. In 1991, mm -hmm. Ed Boon, a programmer in Midway's pinball division, and John Tobias, an artist who at this time was best known for Smash TV and Greg, the Ghostbusters comic book, mm -hmm. a couple issues of that, decided they wanted to make a martial arts game. Midway was really big on licenses at the time. So they said, okay, here are the licenses we have. Choose one. They chose Jean-Claude Van Damme, who was going to be not, not Johnny Cage. There's another name at the time, something Tim, not Bruce Tim. That's a Batman guy. Anyway, what happened is it fell apart. The, uh, the uh, Van Damme's agent never got back to them. So Van Damme missed out on being in Mortal Kombat 1, which is probably a good thing because then it would probably have been a one and done license game, right? But now... 31 years later, Van Damme is in Mortal Kombat 1, a Mortal Kombat 1, playing the character he would have played all along. That's amazing. That's history right there. That's coming full circle. And the other thing to note about that is, if it had happened back then, it probably would have been really different than what it was today. Because today, in 2023... Oh. John claude Van Damme has a much greater degree of self-awareness. He, he knows what he is now, and he yeah. embraces it. He loves it. If it, happened, if it happened back then, Mortal Kombat would not exist. It would have been a one-and-done license. It would have been so Bloodsport the game. Didn't. It would have yeah. been Bloodsport the game, and it wouldn't have yeah. had as long that's, of a history. That's actually apocryphal. They weren't looking to make Bloodsport the game. They just wanted to license Van Damme. And if they were going to license anything at the time... They wanted a. Uh, I think he was Boxer? working on Universal Soldier. They wanted oh, okay. to do that. So what you're saying is Van Damme's, too. Van Damme's flaky agent is the reason we have Mortal Kombat for 30 years. <laughs> hey, that's yep. At the that's very cool. least, it's why we got Johnny Cage in the. And Johnny Cage is awesome. <laughs> so Johnny like... Cage, the split punch, the vanity, all that. Yep. Uh... And just the way JCVD goes ham on this performance, on, on like the motion capture and everything, like I love it. Like mm -hmm. it, it's the fun that we got. Not not necessarily like that that he's doing it on purpose. Probably shouldn't make it as fun as it is. Like as opposed to like what he did in Street Fighter in '94. But like I don't know. I appreciated it. I like I liked what he did for this game, and I'm I'm, I'm all for this nomination. <laughs> this was one of those trailers when it dropped. I was just like I was that pointing at the screen meme. I was like, it, they did the thing. They finally did the thing that they've been talking about for 30 years. Uh, so, yeah, I think just for fans of the series, like, this is a huge moment. Uh, obviously, David's written the book on Mortal Kombat history, so he understands just how significant this moment <laughs> is for them. Uh, there are other celebrities in Mortal Kombat 1 that I think don't do as good of a job as, Mortal, as, as JCVD, but obviously he's campy, too. Uh, the whole game is kind of campy, so that's not that big of a departure. That's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I do like his fatality with the car. I think that's one of the funnier fatalities. Well, he in the revels game. in it. This is the yeah. best. 
and like the tire that's on fire rolling behind him when he's just kind of standing there like yeah it's it's a swaggy fatality uh and that trailer is definitely one of my favorite trailers that Mortal Kombat draft this year so yeah it, I think it's a very worthy nomination it was like when we when we were sitting down with this category it just I instantly typed it in for myself because I was like yeah Jean-Claude Van Damme Mortal Kombat 1 that's a huge deal it it may not it may not matter to a lot of young people today like at all but it is for people who have been paying attention to this franchise for a while uh yeah it's it's, a even, even adding to that context like mortal kombat one is is it reaches a lot of new fans because it resets their timeline but it's also a game that caters to fans because we'll get into this in another category but one of the driving interests in the story is how is everything different are these two people enemies are they friends what's going on here so the fact that john claude van damme he's kind of like the centerpiece of all this history so it's, mm-hmm. his inclusion is thematic in a way it's pretty cool it's perfect timing like with the the brand new universe the relaunch like this is just it makes more sense now than it would in like mk11 right. uh so yeah I, I think it's a great nomination uh bill were you the one who nominated Dimitri Vegas here? Yes. Would you like to speak so, to it? I would. Um, so, obviously, the wonderful world of assassination, which is what it's called now instead of Hitman 3. Uh, <laughs> it's been ongoing for quite some time. I mean, you can actually trace it back to 2016 with the reboot of Hitman, and then Hitman 2 in 2018, and Hitman 3, and and whatnot. And uh, it's not the first cameo they've done, but I think it was a really well-done cameo. If you recall when we had our contracts that we made for Shaq News, yes. that was done in the nightclub, the Berlin nightclub in Germany. And fittingly, Dimitri Vegas is actually a target in the nightclub in Berlin. And the idea behind it is that he is trying to strong arm the owner of the club and take it over so that he can expand his massive drug trade, his international drug trade. Um, it's fully voiced, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be much of a cameo. Uh, But I was kind of taken back by how much I hated the character as he's sitting there. Like, I dressed up as the club owner who was, you know, asleep in a closet somewhere um, and sat down and had a meeting with Dimitri Vegas. And uh, he explained to me how he was going to force me to give me or give him my club. And, um, yeah, I shot him in the back with a uh, poison dart and threw him over the railing into a giant pit of people who were dancing to a DJ and it was actually one of the better elusive targets I think that they've done. Um, I don't know that it's a 30 year history, Jean-Claude Van Damme level, but it was pretty damn cool and uh, neat to see in a game that's uh, still going. So I will say that as somebody who, as somebody who absolutely hated Dimitri Vegas's cameo in Mortal Kombat 11, I think he's a better fit for Hitman, and I think he's a better fit as somebody. You can get to... rid of him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and it is EDM, um, it is actually... EDM DJs become way more easy to handle when you can yeah. literally just throw them dead <laughs> throw them onto off the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually an it, it's a high stakes cameo as well, and this is more like a credit to IOI to be honest. But um, elusive targets are not replayable. Um, which means that if you're actually playing this and you mess it up, that's it. You missed. You're gone. Like, you can't do it again. Um, and it is time-based in terms of, like, it's only, like, this one I think they're keeping around for, like, a month or something like that because of how high profile it is. But it is, like, a, a timed thing that that may come back around in the future at some point. But um, kind of cool impl- um, implementation of, uh, of the elusive target and uh, definitely satisfying to pitch them off a balcony. So... Nice. Um, to keep it moving, uh, TJ, you're kind of one of our... TJ and Greg are kind of our Dead by Daylight folks here. Who wants to talk about Nicolas Cage? We are in a era for Nicolas Cage. The cage one might say. <laughs> the, <laughs> he, has, uh, he has made a lot of appearances lately and a lot of weird things. Whether it was like that weird Five Nights at Freddy's spinoff movie. He uh, didn't talk in at all. Willy's Wonderland. He yeah. a single word. Yeah, Willy's Wonderland. I, lo- I love that movie. I love that he doesn't talk throughout the entire thing. I also love uh, 
the unbearable weight of uh, massive talent, uh, which is a movie he did with, uh, I think it was Pedro Pascal. Yeah, Pascal. Pedro Pascal. It was so good. And then all that culminates with him just showing up one day out of nowhere and dead by daylight as himself with perks that are specifically built around weird cage things. It's so, like, it's not only just so self-aware, it's so ridiculous. Like, that game has been, like, such a menagerie of horror cameos and, and, and tropes. And, like, we got, we're got we getting Chucky soon. That's been announced. That's so cool. But, like, Nicolas Cage is not one that in a million years I would have been like, oh, yeah, he belongs in Dead by Daylight. I know that we call when he showed like, up at summer at summer game fest. He looked like he didn't know where he was or what was happening, but he's just like, "This looks pretty cool. Like, I'll do this. Sure." <laughs> he's, I know he's that, like, there. I know we view Smash Ultimate as like this ultimate crossover game, and it really is. But Dead by Daylight is like every time they yeah, come up with one of these, you just start looking at it, you're like, "Wow, this lineup is getting better and better." And that that's a live service game that really has gotten better over time. And Cage owns it too. Like the guy is impressive in how much he recognizes his own schlock and uses it to his advantage. He <laughs> has a perk in the game where he straight up fakes being dead and then heals himself once the killer goes away. Mm. And that's like that's like a perfect little actor thing. <laughs> like just fake it out, cheese it out, ham it out, wait for the killer to get away, put yourself back together and get ready for the next scene. Yeah. It's it's so cool how they implemented it and it's so weird. And I just I appreciate what they're doing over there with all that stuff. A solid nomination for sure. Uh one that I think's kind of not surprising is Sam Lake and Alan Wake 2. I know TJ you you reviewed Alan Wake 2 for us. I and I know that the Sam Lake cameo, I don't want to like spoil it for anyone, but like it the game has these moments where it breaks the fourth wall. And uh, Sam Lake is definitely at the center of that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's an interesting thing, too, because you've got Sam Lake playing himself in some scenes, but he's also often voiced by James McCaffrey, who voiced Max Payne. <laughs> and if for those who remember, <laughs> Sam Lake also provided his facial scan for the original Max Payne and Max Payne 1 and 2. So it's like this weird full circle thing of Sam Lake playing Sam Lake, voiced by James McCaffrey, playing this hard-boiled detective who is not Max Payne. That is pretty outstanding. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, I wasn't too surprised to hear that Sam Lake was making a cameo in Alan Wake, just based on the first game and everything else but it's still cool uh how they did it i guess is probably the number one reason why that we're mentioning uh and nominating sam lake for this category and then the last one donovan explain this to me what are we doing you. Here? explain explain <laughs> it to a lapsed star wars fan right no, look, i am um... star wars is great I, don't don't throw anything at me it's great but yeah <laughs> I don't think no, nobody will attack you for hating Star Wars in 2023. But I, I nominated uh, Tamara Morrison, who appears as Boba Fett in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to Fallen Order, um, because it is, I mean, by definition to me, a cameo. So that character appears in the game. I mean, Ozzy didn't even know he was in it until I just mentioned it to him uh, before we, we did this segment. Obviously, uh, classic character, a bit infamous in that universe, but voiced mm -hmm. by the actor who's played him across decades in live action who just did a show who pops in at the end of this bounty hunting storyline. Um, one that I wasn't expecting to pop in that time period. Again, I get that, oh, he's a Star Wars character in a Star Wars game, but that universe is so grand and vast, and there are so many yeah. characters across mediums, books, comics, TV, whatever, uh, that it was a surprise. When I saw I was in, I was like, oh, shit, it's Boba Fett. And then I hear him speak, and I'm like, oh, it's Tamara Morrison. Um, I think it's always fun when they find ways to put that connective tissue in there. Um, it also kind of it gives you an idea of where in the timeline this game is falling, right? Because we know right. that Boba Fett's still around. Well, one of the uh, great things about that. Survivor as a whole is that it connects a lot of different eras of Star Wars, mm -hmm. all seamlessly, no less. And this is another one. This is another thread of a different era that it it seamlessly connects to. Like the Force Unleashed tried to do that, and it felt kind of not to no pun intended. It felt forced. 
but with Survivor, I think it works a lot better. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I was trying to do a drum hit for you there, Ozzy, because I was solid Thanks. dad joke. <laughs> Appreciate it. I wish Greg, Greg get it in post. That'll be easy, right? There you um, go. <laughs> but... Okay, well, I, I understand the logic now behind this cameo, because I agree, like, an unexpected appearance of a of a character like that is definitely a cameo. And to your point, having the voice actor being the same as the person who performed Boba Fett all those years ago is pretty cool. It's a nice reward for that end of, for that string of side stories, which now I'm enticed to go back to the game and try and find that. <laughs> yep. Oh. Cool. Well, I think we got our nominees out the way. Let's uh, let's get to voting. I'm gonna start with Denny. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, John Claude Van Damme. I'm guessing David, you're also going with JCVD. Johnny Cage wins. <laughs> Flawless victory. Remains to be so, seen. But... <laughs> Remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah. We've only had one flawless victory so far in these deliberations. And I think no, 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 nothing you can say about JCVD is flawless. In fact, that's part of the charm. <laughs> Literally nothing, yeah. That's very true. Uh, Donovan, are you sticking with your uh, Star Wars <laughs> Jedi Survivor nominee? No, I'll vote for uh, Nick Cage and Dead by Daylight. I think that's one of the funniest things to happen in video games this year. So. I think just Nick Cage on stage with Jeff at the, the Summer of Jeff, that was the one yeah. of the funniest Your things. deal that, that was. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and you could tell and he then, did his homework too, or at least his publicist did, because he was like spitting out all these random facts about Dead by Daylight, which is like more than you can say for most celebrities to pop up in video games. Al Pacino. Yeah, sure. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Wait a second. Freaking Pacino at the yeah. Game Awards last year. Oh, god, god, that was such a mess. Yeah. When you said Al Pacino, I was just thinking of Dunkachino for some reason, but okay. <laughs> uh I, you know, we're in a Duncan economy here in Canton. Uh but yeah. <laughs> Uh, Greg, I'm gonna do with um, Jean Claude Van Damme, JCVD, TJ. I'm staying with Cage, yeah. Nicholas Cage in Dead by Daylight is really this is gonna be a tough one. I'm curious where this goes. I obviously I am TJ, waiting. TJ's talked me into Nick Cage, I'm, uh, I'm on board with Nick Cage. <laughs> See, he's waiting for Nick Cage. David's eyes just got bigger. Uh, <laughs> Bill, I'm, I'm taking any vote for Cage as Johnny Cage. Also, make a note of that. Okay, <laughs> so there's six votes for. <laughs> okay, Bill. Did Ozzy did Ozzy vote already? Ozzy voted yeah, for Nick Cage, Nick Cage. Uh, not Johnny Cage, Nick Cage. The, the the very this is the first argument I've heard so far in deliberations where the argument sold me and David's story sold me. So, Jean Claude Van Damme. Okay. And <laughs> he's doing the post. Sam. Yeah, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Nicolas Cage. I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing the Mortal Kombat story. I, I think for Cameo, for me, it makes sense, Nick Cage. Steve. I'm going with Jean Claude Van Damme. And hey, my vote is meaningless. Is. My vote does not matter. So that was a tight race. I Ooh, I was going to vote for JCVD anyway. Uh, but yeah, that was very close. I think both Nicolas Cage and JCVD deserve some praise for their random ass cameos this year. So but as JCVD, a, as yeah, go a, ahead. to pay tribute to the winner, I move that we spell cameo in this category with a K. Oh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> you know what? I'll allow it. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, congratulations to all the nominees. All of them were sweet cameos, but one was just a little, you know, ready for prime time compared to the other ones. You know, it was a little bit, he's just so, he's such a meme already. And I know Nick Cage is also a meme. Like, talk I about love it was the battle of the memes. It was literally two memes head to head here. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't even mad. I think, Those are great. Solid debate. Uh, but yeah, I agree with everything with what David said. If you haven't read Long Live Mortal Kombat, you should. Uh, there's a lot of awesome details about Mortal Kombat in it. JCVD, Mortal Kombat 1, Nether Realm, congratulations. You have won the Shaq News Award for Best Cameo with a K of 2023. <laughs>
Boom. 